Hey guys, Michael Hyatt here. Welcome to this replay of the broadcast. If you're watching it that way, keep in mind that you can still show the love and show your applause by tapping on the screen and giving me some heart love. My name is Michael Hyatt. This is the Virtual Mentor Show. My goal is to give you the clarity, the confidence, and the tools you need to win at work and to succeed at life. And today we're going to be talking about the three reasons why every entrepreneur or leader, people just like you, need to be getting regular exercise. And this is going to be based on science. And I'm going to link you to a blog post that I wrote a while back. And you can find it at michaelhyatt.com. But the short link is vmentor.tv forward slash exercise. That'll get you straight to the blog post. In case you don't know me, again, my name is Michael Hyatt. I'm the author of the New York Times bestseller platform, Get Noticed in a Noisy World. I'm also a blogger at michaelhyatt.com where I get about a million page views a month. I have a podcast on iTunes called This Is Your Life that gets about 300,000 downloads a month. And you can find it in the iTunes directory just by searching for my name. Probably the most biggest claim to fame I have is that I've been married for 37 years to my wife, Gail, who's also kind of famous. And uh, we have five grown daughters. We have four sons-in-law and eight grandchildren. It's awesome. Again, today we're going to be talking about three reasons why every entrepreneur needs regular exercise. We're going to get in the content in just a minute. Hi from Glasgow, Scotland. Somebody from Sioux Falls, South uh, Dakota. Where else are you guys from? Heather from Missouri, Tacoma, Washington. Hello from North Texas. Awesome. Miami, Tampa. I just love seeing where everybody's from. By the way, I'm in Tennessee. I'm broadcasting outside of Nashville, Tennessee today where I live. Brazil, Dallas, Michigan, Paul from Lexington, Lima, Peru, New York, Woodlands, Texas, New Jersey, Augusta, Rochester, Wichita, Southeast Alaska. Is that near Kenai? I've been to Kenai, which is awesome. My brother actually lives there. Well, it's good to have you guys on board today. Again, my goal is to give you the clarity, the confidence, and the tools you need to win at work and to succeed at life. If you're ready to stop drifting through life and start designing a life you love, you're in the right place. Before we get into the content today, I got some fun stuff to share with you. Are you guys up for it? How many of you, let me ask this question. I got something really cool to show you. How many of you would consider yourself an introvert? Okay, if you're an introvert, give me a yes in the comments. And while we're doing that, if you're having trouble commenting, it says the broadcast is too full. By the way, lots of comments going now. Uh, just X out, come back in. You may have to do that four or five times, but you can usually get in. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, here's another question for you. How many of you think I'm an introvert? Okay, I mean, you guys know me pretty well. If you've been on these scopes before, you've seen me interact with you. Am I an introvert or not? Somebody said, I think I'm a mix. Yes. I said, do you think I'm an introvert? Somebody asked me to say it again. No, don't. Omni, House of Britain says Omni. Yes, you are. Well, guess what? I am. You know, I may be a little bit of what they're now calling an omnivert, which is a little bit of both, but uh, I would consider myself an introvert. Now get this. I got a t-shirt. I don't even remember where I found this, so don't ask me, because I don't know. You're gonna have to search for it on the, on the internet. This t-shirt says, sorry I'm late, I didn't want to come. <laughs> Does that sum up what it's like to be an introvert? Sorry I'm late, but I didn't want to come. So that's a t-shirt, just got that in the mail today. Another thing I wanted to share with you guys is that um, I'm still reading through Rising Strong. It's available on audible.com. Um, I don't even know Brene Brown, I just love this woman. I love her work, it's been hugely helpful to me. This book is fantastic. And in the very first part of the book, she frames it. So she says, um, her first book, which the Gifts of Imperfection, is about owning your authentic self and learning to be vulnerable, you know, owning your own story. Her second book, Daring uh, Greatly, is about being all in, really committed, and being courageous and being brave. This book is about what happens when you fall. In other words, when you go through a failure. What are you doing? I wrote about this last week. I reviewed the book a little bit. But if that sounds like you, if that would be profitable to you, I want to encourage you to get that book. All three of those books, 
this last week are on the New York Times bestseller list. That's how popular Brene is. I think she's an, an amazingly authentic uh, woman. My daughters and my wife met her a couple weeks ago when she was here in Nashville on a book tour. They said she was an awesome speaker as well. So anyway, Rising Strong's uh, the book. One other little tech tip I want to give you. You guys up for tep tic, tep tics? <laughs> That's a totally different thing altogether. Are you up for tech tips? If you're a little bit geeky, say I'm geeky. Let me, let me know in the comments. I don't want to be talking to the right people here. Hey, Niels. Restore to serve says, please bring it. Geeky. Yes, I'm very geeky. Okay, I'm a little bit of a geek too. Super geeky. I found this amazing application through the Ray Edwards podcast, which I highly recommend. Ray's one of my favorite podcasters. It's called the Ray Edwards Show. And Ray pointed me to this tool called Expand Drive. Now I'm going to spell it for you because it's a little bit funky, but you can find it at this URL, expanddrive.com, E-X-P-A-N-D-R-I-V-E. -E. So one D, expanddrive.com. And what it allows you to do is to connect to almost any cloud service you want, Dropbox, Amazon S3, uh, Google Drive, as though, get this, it were a flash drive or a USB drive just plugged into your computer. So unlike other solutions like Dropbox or even InSync for Google Drive, you don't have to sync the files and have them taking up space on your hard drive. You can access them just like they're an external drive hanging off your main computer. Way cool. I know a little geeky, but I am what I am. I'm a little geeky. So I got real excited about that uh, this weekend when I hooked it up. It really allowed me to offload a lot, a lot of bunch of big media files that I use and not have them taking up space on my hard drive. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna get into the content. Again, I'm, my name is Michael Hyatt, author of the New York Times bestseller platform, Get Noticed in a Noisy World. Today, we're talking about personal development, and we're gonna talk about three reasons why entrepreneurs or overwhelmed high achievers just like you need to be getting regular exercise, okay? So I'm gonna to try to convince you of that this is based on a blog post that I wrote some time ago, which you can find at the mentor, like virtual mentor, vmentor.tv forward slash exercise. Okay, so all the links, all the juice that I'm going to give you here in this oral presentation are there in written form on the blog post. I'm going to talk for probably about another 10 minutes, then I'm going to take your questions about exercise or personal development or whatever you want. I don't care. And I would love for you, before I get into this, to share this uh, scope with your friends. That really helps me get a larger reach and helps me justify the time that I'm taking to do this. But if you could just slide left to right if you're on an iPhone or an iPad or bottom to top, make sure, first of all, you're subscribed to my scopes so you don't miss another one. And then share it. You know, show the love, share it with people. And of course, I welcome hearts. You know, that's your way of showing kind of applause that you agree with something I've said or just, you know, it resonates with you, you can show me the hearts. And did you know that you can give up to 500 hearts? That's the maximum you can give. How many of you have ever maxed out? Some of the scopes that I've been on recently, like uh, Christine Dwyer's, I was on that one, Shalene Johnson, I've been trying to tap that screen like crazy to get to 500 because it's my way of thanking these broadcasters for the work and the time that they're expending in serving me. So. If that makes sense for you, I'd love to have some hearts, but I'm not going to beg for them, although that may have been borderline begging. I don't know. Okay, so three reasons why, let me just scroll up on my notes here, three reasons why exercise is essential if you're a leader, if you're an entrepreneur, if you're a high achiever. Okay, ready? Reason number one, exercise, and thank you uh, for putting the link in there, uh, exercise, Shalene, good to see you on, awesome. Exercise hones your competitive edge. Whatever else being an entrepreneur is about, I mean, you're competing in the rumble and tumble of this economy, you know, trying to make money, trying to serve people, trying to build a business, uh, trying to make a difference in the world. My guess is that if you're listening to this scope, that's what really motivates you. You want to leave a dent in the universe, to quote Steve Jobs. I do too. But exercise hones your competitive edge. And let me tell you how. Because it takes 
effort to exercise. It takes discipline. It hones your self-discipline. You've got to be able to plan. You've got to have a lot of skills to make room for exercise because I'm going to tell you, most people don't do it. They just don't. You know, they get caught up in a busy life and they've got some excuse why they're not exercising, right? You know, they're just too busy or they think they'll do it later or they think they'll do it, you know, at a different season in life. But here's why exercise is so important if you're an entrepreneur. Being an entrepreneur can be stressful. It can be time consuming. It can be incredibly demanding. And if you're not taking care of yourself, you're not going to be in a position to take care of your family or take care of your business. Self-care is critically important. It's like, you know, when you fly in an airplane and the first thing that the, the flight attendant says to you is, you know, as they go through their little spiel is, you know, in the unlikely event of cabin depressurization, you know, which I'm glad that's unlikely. It's never happened to me. But they go through the whole deal where the oxygen masks are going to come out of the ceiling. And what do they tell you to do? Put it on yourself first. What? Before you attempt to help anyone else. Because if you're not breathing, how much use are you to anybody else? Uh, that would be zero. You're of no use to anybody else. So you've got to have an appropriate level of self-care. And that's what exercise done, does. And it hones your competitive skills. You know, it, it gets more uh, blood to your brain. It makes sure that you're fully present. It makes sure that you're alert, that your cognitive faculties are operating at peak performance. So that's the number reason why you gotta exercise. Now I want you to be honest. Do you exercise on a regular basis? And I would love to hear from you, what time of day do you normally exercise? For me, it's 7 a.m. in the morning. I get up at 5 a.m. I kinda go through a morning ritual where I spend some time in prayer and Bible reading and doing some other things. And then I hit the gym. And usually Gail and I go together and we go for one hour. I work out with a trainer Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And then Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, I work out on my own, mostly cardio, but some other uh, strength training as well. Okay? So what time? 7.30, running, 6 p.m., 9 p.m.? Recently, I've started around 1 or 2 p.m. You know, I wish I could do afternoon exercise like that because I think it really does give you a, a kind of an additional jump start to the day. But for me, it's in the morning. 4.45, wowzer. When I was in college, I would get up at 5 a.m. and meet another student on the street at 5.30 and we'd go running. Shalene says, every day at home, 7.30 a.m. Awesome, you're such an example, Shalene. You just inspire me, just your whole attitude towards fitness and life. So if you guys aren't following Shalene Johnson, at Shalene Johnson, you must. One of the best broadcasters on Periscope, one of the best podcasters. Far and away, she's on my must listen list. Uh, every week, her blogs at shaleenjohnson.com are, are tremendous as well. Can you tell I'm a fan? Okay, second reason. Second reason why if you're an entrepreneur or if you're an overwhelmed high achiever or if you're just a leader in a corporation, why you need to exercise on a regular basis is because of this. Exercise empowers your work-life balance. Don't you want work-life balance? Oh my gosh. That to me is like the holy grail. And I think partly because I worked in a big corporate company, publicly held company, where I was the CEO, where I saw so much amazing lack of work-life balance. And I went on a six-year quest to try to turn the culture around and put work-life balance as kind of one of our core uh, cultural ideals. And so one of the things I started doing was not only running half marathons myself, but enrolling the employees in the process. I think uh, the top year we had 280 people in our company out of 650 run a half marathon. One lady, Lisa Lair, I'll never figure, uh, forget this, she lost 80 pounds just training for the half marathon. She said to me, it changed my life. Her performance at work dramatically improved. Why? Because she had work-life balance. And here's what the science says, and this is in the article at vmentor.tv forward slash exercise, get this, regular exercise reduces your anxiety and stress levels. So when you go home at the end of a long day, you can be fully present to the people you love. Um, when you're exercising, you're exercising a part of you that um, is critically important for the success of everything else. I mean, how useful are you to your family when you're sick? 
or you've got some disease or some ailment, you know, it's difficult. And, and I, look, I get that things happen even to healthy people, but I'm just saying insofar as it depends upon you, you have a stewardship obligation to take care of this one and only body that God has given to you as a sacred trust. And it's important that you eat right and that you exercise regularly so this instrument of your body will be available to serve other people. And so it empowers, regular exercise empowers work-life balance. It also boosts your self-confidence. And that helps you in every area of your life. You know, I, I used to be really good at work and I didn't attend to work-life balance. And when I came home from the office, I kind of didn't know what I was doing. You know, I felt like I was kind of out of my comfort zone and I didn't have a lot of self-confidence. But exercise is one of those things that'll build your self-confidence, not just in your uh, life at home, but in every area of your life, even your confidence at work. And I don't think as an entrepreneur, there's anything more important than your confidence level. I mean, think of it this way. Yeah, I see this comment. Shalene says it's like a drug. It is like a drug. When you're confident, you feel like you can leap tall buildings at a single bound, right? Like Superman. You feel like you could take on anything when you're confident. That same person who's confident, 12 hours later, they're tired. They don't have the resources uh, emotionally, perhaps physically, that they had at the beginning of the day. They're exhausted. They don't want to try anything. Things that would be easily conquered in the morning when they're fresh now look daunting and impossible. But exercise gives you stamina. It gives you confidence. It, gives, it, it raises your energy and allows you to keep it for longer periods of the day, especially when you come home and you're with your family. So this work-life balance is critically important. I don't want to give my family my leftovers, do you? No. I want to give my family my best stuff. And that requires exercise and requires that I'm emotionally, physically, spiritually, in every way available to them. So that's the second reason. First reason, exercise hones your competitive edge. Second reason is that exercise empowers work-life balance. Third reason, exercise improves our problem-solving abilities. It does. It improves our problem-solving abilities. Now, not only do you have to solve the little problems of when are you going to exercise and how are you going to work it in and what are you going to rearrange so that you make time for what's really important and not just experience the tyranny, the urgent, which so many people are caught up in. But how can you make time for the important? It's a problem-solving thing. But more importantly, when you exercise, it increases your blood flow. It releases hormones in your system, endorphins and other things that speed up your brain and increase actually your cognitive and intellectual ability. You can increase your intellectual capacity through regular exercise. And in fact, I would say this in conclusion, and I'm gonna open this up for questions. The very best um, ideas I've ever had, ideas for making money, ideas that turned into multi-million dollar businesses or projects were hatched when I was exercising or within an hour after exercising. Why? Because I had the blood flow and also because I was relaxed. And that's when creativity happens. If you want to be creative, if you want to be more productive, if you want to be more focused, if you want to make a bigger contribution, you've got to make exercise a regular part of your daily routine. This is not an option. I'm telling you, if, if, if you're comfortable with mediocrity, if you're comfortable to sit back and just kind of take what life gives you, if you want to continue to drift rather than design your life, don't exercise. But if you want to start taking control now, you must make exercise a priority. For me, it's probably the second most important thing I do, right behind you know my spiritual life and pursuing God. So what questions do you have? And I want to ask you to do this. Give me your name in all caps at the beginning of the comment, and then give me two question marks and ask me your question. Katie, best way to motivate those around you to exercise, coworkers, spouse, friends. You know where I think you got to start, Katie, is with self-leadership. You got to be an example. People need to see the improvement in your life. You know, because it's easy to kind of get on a kick. You know, like uh, somebody that's gotten sober suddenly and now they're on a kick to get everybody else, all their drinking friends sober. You know, it just, it just doesn't have much impact. People have got to see that you're committed to it, that it's making a difference in your life. And I would just lead by example. You know, that's what I've tried to do in my family and that works pretty well. 
Uh, Sarah says, must make exercise a priority to live your best life and give our best to others. By the way, visit Sarah's website. She has an incredible story where she did this herself. Paul, besides cardio, what's your favorite exercise routines? I do love cardio. And I'm kind of addicted to something called the AMT machine, Advanced Motion Trainer Machine. I love that because I can listen to podcasts like Shaleen's and others that I listen to. But um, I can kind of get in a rut. So I like a lot of different kinds of cardio. Or I shouldn't say that. That's not honest. I don't like a lot of different kinds of cardio. I need to do a lot of different kinds of cardio. So last week, my trainer got me on the rower, which I hate, but it's good for me. But uh, So I'm trying to mix it up. But I love strength training. Strength training, I've discovered, I can actually burn more calories strength training than I can doing simple cardio. You know, there's a sense in which it works out my heart. I want to do both, but strength training, I have a whole new appreciation for it. I've been working with the same trainer for about two years, and it's made a huge difference in my stamina. Sandy, how best to motivate yourself those first few hard days of exercising? Sandy, that's a great question. And here's what you got to do. I think for every goal that you have, you've got to be explicit about writing down your why. Why is this goal important? Why are you exercising? And then get emotionally connected to the why, okay? People lose their way, this is something my wife says, Gail, people lose their way when they lose their why. You know, the reason you stop exercising, the reason you stop doing anything, pursuing any important goal, is you forget the why. And you've got to remember the why. And I find that by writing that why down and reviewing it on a regular basis, it really helps. Nancy says, how much has a trainer helped? Oh my gosh. If I could give you one tip to be consistent. In fact, if I could give you one tip in the pursuit of any goal that you're stuck on, bring in an outside resource. I got this from Dr. Henry Cloud when I was struggling with my strength training. I couldn't get any momentum. I knew what I needed to do. I knew the exercises, I had the routines, I had the cool little iPhone apps, but I was not making any progress. So I said to, to, to Henry, I said, what can I do? I, I gotta make some progress. I know this is important and I'm not making any progress. He said, buddy, you gotta bring in an outside resource. Now, not all of you can afford a trainer, I get that, but it might be um, you know, something like Shalene's uh, show or somebody else that motivates you that encourages you. Uh, but hiring a trainer, if you can afford it, it's a game changer. There are mornings when I get up that I don't want to exercise, but I know that Andrew Nelson, my trainer, is waiting at the gym for me. And that gets my butt into the gym. A trainer will make all the difference. So he says, I have a coach for a marathon training and it's the best. Yes. Grab a serious friend. Yeah, for years I did that. When I was in college, I had a buddy that I met on the curb at 5.30 every morning to run. And it was because we need the buddy system to succeed. Uh, photocracy is a great community online. It is. Tony says, how often do you listen to podcasts versus books versus music? Okay, this is just me. You got to find what works for you. I almost never listen to music when I'm working out. I use it as an opportunity to learn. So right now, I'm finishing up Rising Strong by Brene Brown. I'm also reading a book or listening to a book on Audible called The Multipliers. I'm going back and forth. I usually got about six books going at any one time. But I also listen to podcasts, so I don't really have any specific regimen, you know, like Monday, Wednesday, and Friday are books, and Tuesday and Thursday and Saturday are podcasts. I don't. I just kind of mix it up. Sometimes I'll switch in the middle of a, a workout session and go to something else. And obviously, when I'm working out with Andrew, um, I'm listening to him and we're chatting, so I'm not listening to anything during that time. Uh, Carrie says, great time to learn. I can multitask when doing cardio. I know. I love that. Uh, somebody says, I travel full-time internationally and struggle to keep it regular. Any tips? Yes. First of all, let's just acknowledge it is tougher when you're traveling. What I found, and I don't travel as much as I used to because I've intentionally dialed that down so I can spend more time at home with the people I love, but there were years when I traveled a lot. What I found to be more consistent is for me having an overarching objective was important, like running a half marathon or competing in some way, but in addition to that, planning ahead. So I would say to my assistant, you've got to make sure that in the hotel that I'm staying in, They've got a gym and it's got to be available 24 seven and it's got to have the equipment I need. So sometimes we would not stay in a certain hotel. I would not stay in a certain hotel because it didn't have a gym. And then I would mark out the time and I would schedule it and I would plan my, my appointments around it. Now what that means for me is I almost never, almost never have breakfast appointments. Why? Because it knocks me out of my workout routine. 
And for me, I know that if I wait till later in the day to work out, probably not going to happen. You know, is that you? That's definitely me. So yes, Sarah says plan for success. Not having a plan is a plan for a disaster. Just not going to work. Kathy says, do you try to have a way to take notes for your ideas or keep focus on your workout? I don't take notes. I, I just don't. You know, when Gail reads a book, she underlines that. She's taking uh, notes, underlines on the side, on the top, on the bottom, in the back of the book. It's a disaster when she gets done. I can't read her books when she's read them because they're so stinking marked up. But that's not me. And here's the deal. I'm not reading to retain. I'm reading so that those books or those podcasts can serve as a catalyst to shape my own thinking. That's all I'm after in my reading. Not to regurgitate, but, but really to kind of, I was going to try to come up with some cool alliteration there with an R, but I can't think of one. But I'm just, I'm doing that really for my, the benefit of my own thinking. Okay. So he said, I've missed half your daily mentor because I was just doing yoga. Well, good for you. It was worth it. I hope it was worth it. Great podcast you and Stu did about reading. Thanks, Niels. That was last week, I think. Uh, Carrie says, I make comments in Wonderlist app when I hear something good in a podcast. Yeah, that, that's true. Like occasionally I'll have an idea about some project or some blog post that I want to write. And so I'll do that in Evernote. So I just have the Evernote uh, app there. I can tap on it with about three clicks. I've got a text. Craig, do you try to capture any thoughts after reading not specific notes? Not really, not unless I'm in a group. Sometimes I'll talk about that, but only if I'm in a group. Yeah, Ethan says we only retain about 20% of what we read. That's why I don't read to retain. That's not my objective, okay? Maybe yours, and that would probably require taking notes and other more structured forms of reading, but not for me. Anything else, guys? Me and the hubs have a biz together, and if we do not exercise, we are irritated with each other. I know what you're saying. JD says, I need to start doing daily exercise. How do you recommend me change my story? JD, thank you for mentioning your story because I think that most of the problems we have in life originate between our ears. You know, it's in our thinking. And so we can change our story, and by doing so, we can change our lives. So I would start listening to what that narrator, you know, it's just you, uh, but what you're saying to yourself, like, you know, I'm too tired, or um, I don't have the time, or how, how is that narrator giving voice to the objections? I would write those down, and I would decide, in fact, I just gave one of my daughters this advice uh, yesterday, decide on a mantra or uh, a contradictory voice, an alternative to what that narrator is saying. So I often say to my, myself when I'm tired, I feel energetic. I believe energy is a caused thing. You know, you don't just have to be a victim of how you feel, but you actually, this is mind over matter, you can feel differently by the way you think. You can feel differently by getting up and moving. You can feel differently by adjusting your posture. So somebody said, stop running to jump into your periscope, then ran while listening. <laughs> Love it. Johnny Quinn said, oops, scroll by too fast. Do you schedule certain kinds of work after exercise? Kathy says, um, no, other than usually when I come home and work, I, I, first thing I do is I go through my blog feeds and I'm kind of looking for ideas and things that I can write on or podcast on. So it's kind of a creative time for me because I know that that's when I'm going to be the most amped creatively. So yeah, that's about the only thing. Rob, having a retreat day, getting ready for the new school year, math instructor, any tips? Yeah, be intentional. Don't go into a day like that without an agenda for yourself. I do this once a quarter, game changer. Tanny says, I cut down on the number of business and personal developments to master what I learn. Thoughts? Yeah, I think that's a good idea. I think sometimes we can uh, think that the input we're getting is equal to life change, and sometimes it's not. We're just accumulating knowledge. We've got to build in time to apply what we're learning if we're going to have a positive effect uh, on our lives. Always be intentional. That's exactly right. Listening to Unbroken on Audible and Now Want to Run, what do you expose yourself to? Uh, what you expose yourself to impacts desires. I love that book, by the way, on Audible. I, I can think of myself in the gym on the AMT machine, reading that book, amazed. That was a great book. Sven says, I'm the head coach of a CrossFit gym. Oh, I lost it, totally, sorry. That's one of the problems, by the way, with Periscope is that um, you lose the comments quickly. Laura, off topic, what happened to the one person who uh, bought Best Year Ever Leader Project? 
Well, we refunded their money because we didn't end up producing it. Um, so yeah, that was a scope that I did, I guess, yesterday. Emily, this is the last one. Are there any podcasts you would recommend, especially for authors and bloggers? Yeah, Darren Rouse, R-O-W-S-E from Pro Blogger has a terrific podcast for bloggers. Also, Jeff Goins at GoinsWriter.com are two great ones. In terms of podcasting, uh, the man that I listen to the most is Cliff Ravenscraft at PodcastAnswerMan.com. Well, guys, we're out of time. I hope this has been helpful. I hope that you will make exercise a serious priority for yourself, for your family, for your work, and ultimately for the impact you want to have in the world. Think of yourself as an athlete. You are an athlete. And it takes work to stay competitive and to have the biggest impact you can possibly have. Make it a great day. God willing, we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks.